Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, today we are at the, the PTI farm. I want to give you an inside look at one of the trials we're working on in corn and soybeans and it's strip cropping. We had a grower about three years ago come to us and say, hey Jason, I'd like you to test something. I said, oh yeah, what's that? He said, I'd like you to look at alternating blocks of corn and soybeans in the same field. We've been doing this for three years. We've had some pretty good success with it. We started out with 40 foot blocks, 16 rows of corn and soybeans. We've kind of realized that the, the narrower these blocks are, the higher yield response we're going to get. We've gone down to 20 foot blocks and this intense pot behind me is even down to 15 foot blocks. Now, why would anybody want to do this strip cropping thing? Why would we want to do alternating blocks of corn and soybeans in, a, in the same field? Well, we're doing this to have a tall crop in corn next to a short crop of soybeans. We're kind of using soybeans as a sacrificial lamb, if you will, to be a short crop to allow more sunlight to come into the outside rows. These outside rows are gaining more sun and we're gonna use that to build a bigger factory, if you will, gain more photosynthesis to create more energy to the outside rows to give us more yield. And this has worked, we've seen this work. You know, we're gaining 60 to almost 100 bushel uh, yield per acre on the outside rows in corn. The problem with the situation has been soybeans. Soybeans, you know, depending on what direction we plant this, we've seen some lower yields in soybeans to bring the economics of this system down. But I think we figured this thing out and I wanna give you an inside look at what's happening with this intense strip cropping study we've got behind me. We narrowed everything up. We went to 15 foot blocks of corn and soybeans and I took it one step further. They're in 15 inch rows. I've got two hybrids of corn in here. The outside three rows are one hybrid and I planted them at 54,000 seeds per acre, okay? The inside six rows is a different hybrid, and I've got them planted at 44,000. Again, all in 15 inch rows. We've never done this before. We've never done the 15 foot blocks, which I think will work. It's given us more acres, if you will, rather than a 40 foot block uh, of this, this corn to, to, to get high yield. But I've never done it in 15 inch rows. And again, we're trying to, to, to increase population, get as many ears per acre out there since we are gaining more sunlight. And we're gonna try to take advantage of that. Now, the one thing you'll notice on this field, I've got the sun shining right straight at us. Matter of fact, um, the sun is actually setting in the western horizon right now. It's about 6 p.m. here at the PTI farm, and you'll notice the sun coming this way. We've planted these rows east and west because we have to. It's taken two years to figure this thing out, but strip cropping, if you're gonna use soybeans as part of the strip cropping scenario, you've got to plant east-west to eliminate shading of the row. You see right now it's 6 p.m. and the sun is setting in the western horizon. But as we look at its shading effects coming through, there's no shade, everything is getting full sun. You see, if we flip these rows around and we go north-south, now the corn acts like a wall and the beans on the other side of it are going to be shaded. All right, so I've also got this strip cropping system planted in north-south rows, and I want to show you what it means with this whole shading thing that I've been telling you about. Now, I mentioned earlier, it's 6 p.m. in the evening, the sun's setting on the western uh, horizon, and when we plant north and south, look how the corn acts as a wall, and look at these soybeans. 100% of these soybeans are completely shaded. You can see the tops of the corn. Look how much, look at the corn getting the sunlight. But it's a wall, if you will, and I guess the big question is, huh, do soybeans need sunlight too? Absolutely, they're actually a, a photosensitive crop. They need sunlight, yeah they do. And this system planted in a north-south fashion doesn't work for soybeans because we're causing this de detrimental situation of not giving them as much sunlight in this north-south planting fashion. Now, I will tell you, in general, soybeans have brought this whole system down in regard to economics. The best I've been able to do, even in east-west rows, is to get the soybeans to yield a negative 1.6 bushel compared to standard um, you know, wide systems that you know, planting a whole field of beans. What else do we have going on in this high yield study? I've got 30 foot pattern tile underneath us here to get water away when we're too wet. So that's an advantage for us. I also have drip tape, I have Netafim drip tape. We're working with the folks at Netafim, um, installation by NutraDrip. 
and uh, we've got drip tape every 40 inches apart and we've got it buried 14 inches deep. Right now as we speak, I'm drip irrigating and I'm also fertigating. I'm putting on a little bit of nitrogen, just, just a touch of nitrogen today to try to finish this, this crop, this corn crop, and I've got some sulfur going on, okay? And so we're excited about being able to, to fertigate this crop, to finish it and really push for high yield. Again, taking advantage of the strip cropping, the high yield that it offers. But again, we've got the 15 inch rows, the high population, we're gonna feed it, we're gonna get to the finish line, and we're gonna try to get extra yield. But I wanted to show you what we're working on here, give you an inside look. I'm gonna bring you yield data later, but I, I just wanted to bring this to you, show it to you, show, show you what we're working on with strip cropping. This is gonna be very interesting. Uh, at harvest time, I've got a 30 inch row head to harvest these 15 inch rows. If you're a corn head company out there and you've got a 15 inch row head that you'd like to partner with us on, I have the perfect plot to do it on. Just, just wanna throw that out there. But right now I've got a 30 inch row head that we're gonna harvest these 15 inch row, row corn with. It'll work, I just have to slow down a little bit. I've got a 40 foot draper on my ideal combine that I'm gonna have out here. So we're gonna be hanging that draper into these beans and we're gonna to have to address some of the corn stalks because I'm gonna be hanging that draper into the corn stalks. We're gonna use a chopping corn head to chop these corn stalks and we'll use a stalk stomper to lay them down and then that draper head will come right over top of those stalks and I should be able to harvest these no problem. But I'll show you as we're harvesting this stuff when the time comes, but I just wanted to give you kind of a heads up and an inside look at what this thing looks like now, pre-harvest, kind of the ideal behind it and kind of how we progress from wide 40 foot rows down to 15 foot blocks even going from 30 inch rows to 15 inch rows. So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is, you know, sometimes we got to think outside the box a little bit to drive yield and profitability. This system right here that we're looking at last year in 2021 was the number two. It was the top two item in, re in regard to return on investment. It actually made me over $166 per acre extra revenue by implementing this type of system. Here we're gonna go an extra step further by the 15, you know, 15 foot blocks and 15 inch rows, and we'll see if we can improve upon that. Hey, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Inside PTI. As always, if you've got any questions, you can always reach out to your local Precision Planning Premier dealer or send me an email at insidepti at precisionplanning.com. Thanks for watching.